This particular bike I picked up in, uh, in Montreal, um, the owner was a Pink Floyd fan and he had murals painted on the tank of Pink Floyd the wall and on the side covers and uh, the artist's name is on the back, uh, Moby. Uh, that's all going to come off and we're going to try and restore this motorcycle back to what it should, should have been in the first place, a replica of the, the 1948 Indian. This is a Corbin aftermarket seat that when I purchased the bike, it came with the bike. I didn't get the original seat with it. And uh, the only thing holding down this seat was a couple of screws. And you can see right in here, I just took the screws out. There's one right here. It came out and it, I used a 10 millimeter socket. And there's a, there's a screw there. Okay, I took the bolt out on the other side also. So now the seat's coming off. Um, I think that would be pretty much the only thing that should be holding a, a stock seat also. So now here it is where the seat is coming off. So using a Phillips screwdriver, remove the screw that holds on the, the speedometer reset. Okay, using a four millimeter wrench, Allen wrench, I removed all three screws that are holding in the, the chrome plate that holds uh, um, your, your um, indicator lights, pressure light and oil light. Okay, um, now we've removed the, the indicator lights. We've also unplugged our electrical outlet from the, the plug-in inside right here. You can see it right down in there. So it's unplugged now. There's a bit of a trick to getting the the speedometer hold housing off. It does have a small lip that's holding it in the in here. You have to kind of wiggle a little bit, push it forward, and it comes right out. And, um, and now just to save a little bit of time, I've already unplugged the cables and also the speedometer cable uh, goes in right here. You can see where my thumb is. And now that you're looking inside, you can see the speedometer cable. It comes up. And here's your male and your female. If you remove the screws, it should just slide right out. And there you go. And I've rem I'm starting, to, I'm getting ready to remove the tank. So I took this bolt out right here. I used a 12 millimeter socket and now I'm, I'm taking this one out also and this bottom one down here is also 12 millimeter, it has a bit of a spacer, holds the bottom of the tank in place. The tank should lift up over to one side. So here we are, you can see there's a fuel line here being held on, there's um, a connection here, I've taken this one off. And that was at the front of the tank, right up here, or at the back, I should say. That fit on right here. And then this one here has got to come off. So we've got two more electricals and two more, three, two more fuel lines, and this one's already off. Now that we have the gas tank off and we put the bike up on a stand, we secured it with straps. The next thing we're going to start to do is remove this back fender. And the first thing that has to come off, this screw right here, that's an eight millimeter socket and there's one on the other side that has to come off. So now that we've taken this cover off, you can see that there's an electrical plug in right here and that's uh, what goes to your back lights and your, and your, uh, your tail light. Okay, I took uh, the back screw out for, for the fender and I noticed there was a nut on it and uh, I had to reach up in behind and hold it 
stop it from spinning and take it out. I'm assuming it's going to be the same on the other side. Right here. And now next to come off would be these two, this one and this one. And it'd be the same on the other side. And that's going to be a 12 millimeter socket to take those off. We got the bolts out and you can see that uh, the back of the fender is falling down. And now it's just a matter of uh, grabbing it with two hands and picking it up. And there's our back fender off. And we can take all, uh, all the bits and pieces off. You can see the screws on the other side. The bolts holding everything in place. We'll have to remove all of that before painting and clean it up a little bit. Here it is with the back fender off. So we had a bit of a rub here. Probably when the wheel was coming up and down. I loosened off this gear clamp here, which is a 10 millimeter bolt. A 10 millimeter socket that uh, loosened that off. And then I had to wiggle it quite a bit to get this pipe off. So it's ready to come off right now. You can see the bike's moving around quite a bit. That just slides right off like that. The next thing we have to do is remove this back caliper. And we're going to take out this Allen head socket and this one here, this cap screw. That's what I meant to say, cap screws. So these two will come out. They're uh, eight millimeter, I believe. Um, and after that will be this uh, 17 millimeter, 17 millimeter holding uh, the, the back caliper on. Those two, this one out, and we remove this, take the caliper off. And uh, the idea is to move the wheel. Uh, well, once we move, uh, remove the, the cotter pin and the axle nut, uh, we move the wheel this way to disengage it from the gearbox in here. Uh, there's a, it's actually geared onto the, onto the, uh, the, the drive shaft. And we'll slide it that way and disengage it. And then we'll, uh, we'll remove the wheel. I've removed, there's the last, there's the last uh, bolt holding the cap screw holding the, the brake caliper in. You just give it a little bit of a wiggle. It comes off. And then the next thing that's got to come out is this 17 millimeter socket or wrench. All right, so that one's out. And uh, we'll put that over here for a second. And now this cotter pin's got to come out. There we go, cotter pin out. Um, I don't have the right wrench size for this, um, this back axle nut. So uh, the closest thing I have in uh, the Imperial equivalent is uh, one and, and one sixteenth. So that's just going to have to do it. Fits pretty good, nice and tight. So we've removed our castle nut, our cotter pin, and the shaft comes out quite easily. Another thing I like to do whenever I take a back wheel off a motorcycle, you have it off the ground, but I like to shim it up so it, it, if it does come out once you knock the shaft out, um, it doesn't drop down and uh, go to one side, damage something. So as you like to put a little bit of shim underneath it, just to hold uh, the weight of the wheel. We can easily pull these out once the wheel is resting on them. Okay, so now we're gonna wiggle the bolt and we'll be holding the bracket as the, the axle bolt comes out. This will come loose. So it's important that we grab a hold of it before it hits the ground. Put that to the side and And there's our axle out. There, now it's disengaged. It's off the gear. And we can pull the wheel out. There's the spline. And uh, we had to take, we had to take the, the caliper bracket off. 
in order to bring the wheel out enough to get the clearance to clear this. And so we're going to have to clean that up a little bit. You can see it does where the mating surface is here. There's a little bit of grease. We'll have to clean all that up and uh, put some fresh grease in there. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we start working, we're going to remove our front wheel. We have to take out uh, the cap screws of holding the cover on for the caliper. This one and this one have to come out and then we have to take the caliper out and after that we take the, the axle out of the front. I had, to, uh, I had to use the impact gun to get these uh, caliper bolts out here and here. They were, uh, they were seized in there pretty good. We did get them out though. Okay, so now I'm going to take this cap screw out. It's a six millimeter Allen head and uh, I'm going to remove this bracket and then we're going to get this caliper and get it right out of the way. Maybe put it over the top of our roll bars just so it's out of the way and we don't damage our paint. There we go, now it's out of the way. Our next bolt. We're over on the right hand side of the bike and uh, we're going to be taking out these two Allen head screws, cap screws, and uh, I think they're, they are six, six millimeter. And this is a 10, 10 millimeter Cap screw, that's got to come out. This has to be loosened off. And then, uh, I oh, by the way, I disconnected uh, the speedometer cable at the bottom here. It, it just sits right inside. You can see right here, I just pulled, a, I pulled it out. And now the cable is disconnected at both ends. You could actually probably just take it right off the bike altogether and put it aside. Just so it doesn't get, uh, get in the way and get damaged. Loosen this off. Take our cable holder off and it's got the reflector. Now I'm not following, um, I do have a manual for this and I'm not following the, the manual specifically in the order that uh, it recommends things done. Um, I probably should have taken the shaft out or the, the axle out, front axle out first. It doesn't really matter as long as I've got this bolt holding the fender in place. The fender can come off after the wheel comes out. Eight millimeter wrench. I'm taking this out. It prevents your uh, your your shaft from coming loose. So now that's out. I loosen the nut off. The nut is loose. We took our axle bolt out. We put some blocking underneath our wheel, pulled our axle bolt out. The wheel is just underneath the fender now. And uh, it came out in this orientation, as you can see. And we'll just put that aside. Okay. We have one, bull, one, one cap screw here holding it and the bracket for the, which I had to bend a little bit to get the, the speedometer cable out. And then over on the other side, we've got the one holding it at the bottom. Those two come off, that fender should just drop. All right, that side's off. Put our bracket aside and our screws. Now back over to the other side. And on this side, we've got the one here, right here. It's got to come out, and that fender should just drop. And straight down. That's the only way this uh, this fender goes on and comes off is straight down because of the forks. It's recessed on the side of the fender right here in order to get by the forks. And you can see there's also a bracket in here. 
that holds the screws in place. Okay, the last piece of the puzzle, the last piece that's going to get painted is this uh, light housing here. Right here and right here were two set screws that held the light in. I unplugged the light from the back and uh, now it's out. Four nuts at the bottom held a plate, this plate right here, in uh, that held uh, the light housing down. Now what I noticed is there's tiny little spacers just to, for alignment and when you pull it up you got to be careful you don't drop them. They sit right there in the four holes and we need to put them aside so we don't lose them and uh, pull the plate up. And now with the plate out of the way, we'll have to take the wires out of the back. And there's our last, uh, our last piece that's going to be painted. And that's what our bike looks like. The teardown is complete. And uh, now to repair the parts, to do some painting and uh, reassembly.